It's bar time on Real Garage. Engine bay bar time. Today on Real Garage, I'll be making the removable engine bay bars. I'll be using both MIG and TIG on this project. Removable bars make engine and parts changes a lot easier. It also makes for faster crash repairs, since the whole front assembly is bolt-on, including the frame. To make these bars removable, I machined these bolt-in flanges out of some 3.5 inch round stock that I turned down to 3.25 inches and then used these countersunk socket head cap screws to bolt the two pieces together. Let me show you how they work. Okay. The male flange gets attached to the firewall. But first, a connector bar gets welded to the back and routed through and connects to the A pillar bar. After I bend up my bay bars, they will get welded to the female flange. I made the flanges index to each other perfectly. This will ensure proper bolt alignment. First, I mocked up my car with some fenders and doors so I can get the bar locations. Next, I'll use this template I made out of quarter inch plywood for plasma cutting the holes through the firewall. Warning, read and follow all labels and your owner's manuals. I've got my Spectrum 625 Extreme Plasma Cutter set to 20 amps. And I'm using the Spectrum 375 tips, which have a smaller orifice than the 625 tips. These work great when using the 625 on lower amperages and will give me a narrower cut zone. A little bit of finish grinding, and that will be perfect. Now I have to figure out my bend for the short connector bar, which also has to run through another inner wall before mating up with the A pillar bar. To do that, I drilled a series of eighth inch holes in the inner wall to find the best place to make a template out of this piece of 332 TIG filler metal. That will also serve as the centering point for the hole saw and make a nice tight fit for the tubing to pass through. So this is what my center line bend radius and tube length looks like. I'm using a piece of that high strength steel dough call tubing that I made the cage out of. Basically it's just take my template, line it up with my tube center line and make sure that I get the proper bend radius. Then I can trim the ends to fit. And I'll just trim my ends and cope one side where it matches up with the A pillar bar. So I got both my connect bars bent up and they actually turned out to be exactly the same. So I must be doing something right. But before I weld them into position, I'm gonna bend up my longer bay bars. Now these are pretty easy and they only have one approximately 70 degree bend in it. I like to use brake line to mock up my bends to get the general shape and I can also mark my total tube length. For these bars, I'm planning on following the general slope of this seam. So now it's just 
measure this length, and cut some dough call tubing. Remember, these have a little bit of spring back to them, so you might have to do these a couple times. Okay, so let me catch you up. I got my bay bars bent up and fit into the car. And I made my front mounting pads out of some eighth inch plate steel that I bent to the same radius as the frame. When I bent up my second bar, I didn't use that same brake line template as I made the first one out of. I took the first bar and just matched it. The key points here are to make sure that your bars are level with the frame. And because I have my fenders mounted in their proper position, my top string measurements are also the same. So I guess it's a little bit harder than giving your kid a straight haircut. Next, it's trim my connector bars and weld them to the flanges. But these are in a tight spot, so getting to the back to weld them is gonna be pretty difficult. I'm gonna take my MIG gun and tack them into position first, then pull it out and TIG weld it on the bench. The flange is about 3 8 thick and the tubing is 083. I auto set the Multimatic to quarter inch to make sure that I put down a solid tack. We talked about this high strength dough call tubing before. I basically treat it like chromoly and use 1 16th ER80 SD2 filler metal. I have my Multimatic set for DC TIG steel and 180 amps that I'm regulating with the foot control. Welding the connector bar to the A-pillar bar is another area that the torch upgrade I did back in Season 2, Episode 1 will be useful. During that real gear segment, I upgraded the TIG torch with the AK-150MFC kit. This kit allows you to change torch head configurations quickly and easily. I'll be changing to the small number 24 flush back head to get into the tight areas. So I got my bay bars fit into the car, and I tacked them in four places on the front mounts as well as on the rear flanges. Now I admit, I'm a little bit picky when I do these things. So what I like to do is make sure that my bars are squared diagonally to the frame in the rear, the front, and I make sure that they're level to the frame. Next, I'll weld the bars on the front pads while they're bolted to the frame, and then I'll take the bars out and weld the flanges on the bench. I've set my Multimatic for DC TIG steel, 160 amps for the front pads and 180 amps for the rear flanges. I'll be regulating that amperage with the foot pedal.
So after welding, all my measurements still check the same. And actually, the bars really aren't finished yet. I'll be making a set of additional spider bars, but I can't do that until I get my mock-up engine installed. Spider bars are a series of diagonal bars that look like this. They triangulate the front end and eliminate any frame flex, which is important because this car uses a big heavy sway bar. And a flex-free frame allows the suspension to work properly under severe loads, which we plan on doing quite regularly. Next time on Real Garage, we design and build a custom aluminum oil tank for the engine.